So guys, welcome back. Uh, video number four on the LX bypass shocks. And uh, this is gonna be a good one. Uh, this is gonna be the assembly. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys step by step on how to assemble these. Uh, I'll give you a little preview. Uh, it's pretty involved. As you can see <clears throat> by the uh, parts breakdown here, there's a lot of parts on here. A lot of them are tiny. <clears throat> the smallest little O-rings I've ever seen. And uh, it can be a little tedious. I think it's gonna go a little bit quicker. It took me about 45 minutes taking my time to do the first one. Uh, and yes, I did do one in advance to kind of prep for this video. I just wanted to focus on building it and not really making a video. And I wanted to kind of see um, what kind of tips or tricks I can give you guys while, while building these. And I came up with a few things. I found a couple things that weren't too clear on the instructions. So I'll tell you about those. And uh, yeah, I will say this because um, I know you're all dying to know how these, uh, how these work. And I can say that they're nice and smooth. So I built these up with some Traxxas uh, 60 weight, not knowing what to use. There's no recommendation in the instructions. I use the two hole piston and some 60 weight. And I need to take off one of the dampers off my UDR and kind of compare it and see how it feels. But it feels pretty good. I think the second one I'm going to build with a single hole piston just to see uh, what the difference is. And then I'll kind of figure out which one I like better uh, to do the testing with. But so far, so good, guys. These are actually functioning. You can notice it's very subtle, but there is a difference when you make uh, some adjustment to these little bypasses. So really cool. I'm happy so far. The seals seem to be doing a good job. Um, and yeah, so far, still really impressed with these. Uh, but the proof will be, you know, in the actual testing and uh, seeing how well these work. But they sure as hell look really cool. So <clears throat> enough, uh, enough of this, guys. Let's get into it, and I'm going to show you exactly um, what it takes to build these up. All right. Hey guys, as you can see, I kind of got everything laid out here. These bags are numbered. Um, now they're not numbered like sequentially per bag because some of the numbered items are actually like the uh, the uh, rod end and the shock body itself. So those are pretty obvious to see what, what they are. So I just have them sitting up here. But the, the bags I did kind of lay out in sequential order here just so I can kind of keep, um, keep them in, in line. And uh, I will just note this, they are written on with some little fine tip like Sharpie or something. Just be careful though, if you touch these with oily hands and stuff or even taking them out of the box, you can rub some of the numbers off. So what I would recommend is right off the bat, like write a little bit larger. You know, some of these I had to like redo the numbers on because I had kind of wiped them out and you don't want to mix these up. Some of them are, are similar enough, like these two bags of O-rings, you know, they are different, but um, you'll have a hard time uh, figuring this out if those numbers come off. So either write it down like under where you have them laid out or just take something else and write it on the bag or just, you know, be careful. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I got uh, everything kind of laid out here. Now, the only tools I, I really used for this were, um, you know, a good pair of shock pliers, a 5.5 uh, wrench. That's just for tightening these little, um, these little like kind of lock nuts there. The uh, Allen key that they give you with the kit, a, uh, a four mil nut driver, just to tighten the nut on the, uh, on the shaft uh, holds the piston on. And I use a, um, a pick here just to kind of get some of the O-rings out of the bag and to, to get them in place. Uh, aside from that, I got some 60 weight Traxxas fluid that I'm trying out for now. Seems to be doing um, pretty well. Uh, X-Acto knife for basically just doing the stickers. You know, it does come with the stickers that you can put on there. So it does recommend you do them first. And uh, I, I did it first just also because you're gonna have oily hands. And once you get oil all over this, they might not stick well. So I've slapped those on there first. Your three compressions there and your one rebound up top there. So uh yeah that's that the only other thing i am using if you have some type of like um like a seal grease like a green slime or something i'm using this uh it's actually for mountain bikes it's rock shock stuff but it's it's made for uh shock seal so i've been using this and it doesn't say to do this anywhere in the instructions but pretty much any of the o-rings or you know i'm definitely using that on the seal itself for the the shaft, but definitely some of the O-rings, once I put them on, like for example, these get tiny O-rings around them, I'll take a little bit of that uh, seal grease and wipe it around the edge there. So when you tighten it, 
the seal doesn't bind up and it just makes a, a little bit better um, seal essentially. So any of the O-rings, the, the, uh, any basically rubber uh, component on here, I will kind of put some kind of lube or even just drip a, a little bit of oil on it. Same thing where these, um, these little um, balls go into the check valves, I'll drip a tiny little bit of oil on them just so they move freely and they don't get um, bound up in there. So those are my tips so far. Let's get into this. I'm not going to do like a real time thing. This is going to take forever, but I'm going to show you step by step exactly uh, the process here. So let's do it. Okay, so uh, first step here, you have 19, 20, 21, 22. Those are the, the part numbers. So it's essentially your, um, your shock shaft, your piston. Now I'm going to, I'm going to do this single hole piston on this one, just to see, I did the, the two hole on the other one. I just want to see the difference. So the piston goes on first, your little um, plastic spacer here goes on. And then uh, the nut goes on, and you're gonna use your four mil driver. As you can see, guys, if you have, um, I may need some more coffee for this today. If you got, if you have uh, fat fingers, this is gonna be uh, a struggle for you guys. I'm <laughs> sorry to say, but especially when you see these tiny little O-rings go on. So just uh, snug this up. Doesn't need to be super tight. You're gonna want to hold this with the. Uh, shock shaft pliers. And again, I'm going to be skipping um, in and out on this. I just don't want to make this a crazy long video. So you get the idea of this too. So that's all done. So step two is to take, um, <clears throat> see what it says, all number 16 onto number 15 nuts. So these are the number 16, the second to smallest O-rings. And uh, these are the, uh, the little uh, nuts that go in the adjuster. So these O-rings need to slide over the threaded part and they need to sit down in this little uh, corner here. So the best way I found to do it was just to take one, put it on your finger, and um, kind of get it started on one side and try to roll it over. Um, and of course, it's it's harder to do this with the camera in the way here, but um, once you get it started there, you're gonna have to kind of take your fingernail and just kind of roll it down like bit by bit down into that lower corner. So uh, that's pretty much it. You get the idea, you gotta do um, all three like this. So those are done and I just added a tiny little bit of seal grease just around the edge here by the um, bearings. So next step is we're gonna be taking these uh, small uh, check, bolt, check balls and springs and inserting them into the bypass tubes here. Right, so that's basically 17, um, 18 and 17. So how it works is you put a um, one of the ball balls in. What I'm doing is just taking a tiny little drip of oil, just to get a little bit of oil, and the ball will actually stick to it. And just be careful, you know, where you're dropping this thing in because it will fall off at some point. Um, but just pop it right down in the end, and remember which one you're you're working on here because you're not going to be able to see it once it's in there. So you get a ball, then you get a spring, and then you do a second ball on top of that. You pop that in there. Then you're gonna take your uh, your little blue and for the compression, you use the blue one and for the uh, rebound, you use the red one. So thread that in, take your little, uh, this is just a 5.5. These do not need to be uh, super tight. So just carefully snug them up a little bit and then do the same thing. So you're gonna do a ball spring ball and a ball spring ball just on these three. So you got two, Two compression and uh, your one rebound here. Okay, so those are all done. You have the uh, the red for the rebound, then the blue for the two compression. As I noted in my earlier video, this is actually a faux tube. This one has no adjustment. It's just there for for looks. Um, next, you're going to take your little um, grub screws here, which are um, number eleven, and then you get these tiny little O rings, number twelve. These go onto this, um, onto this grub screw as it threads into these uh, aluminum fittings here. So let me show you that real quick. Uh, I find that found it's easier just to take one out. I mean, look how tiny this thing is. Now it says to put the screw in first and to roll these down over the threads, but what I found works best, take a tiny little bit of grease on this thread, and then I just put the O-ring on the end kind of hold the O-ring and then just thread, kind of thread the O-ring 
through and it helps to use the uh, the Allen here. But kind of just take a light grip on the O-ring. Helps to have a little grease on there too. And if you just kind of like thread that grub screw in between your fingers here holding the O-ring and just get it so it's about um, halfway. And then you take this, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more grease onto these threads just so that they they seal right and they're always um, easy to adjust. And then these get threaded down into your um, bypass adjusters, right? And we're gonna start probably at about the, the halfway mark. And then you're gonna take number 13, which is this little like uh, thumb screw type dealy. Almost looks like a little uh, cigarette lighter kind of thumb thing. And uh, I don't see any specific way. There maybe is a tiny little bit of a like a chamfer on the inside, on one side more so than the other. But if you do see that, I would thread that part down towards the O-ring. And again, make sure you have a nice area to work on these guys because if you drop any of these little parts, like the O-rings, they give you extra, but a lot of the other stuff, you don't really have extra. So that threads down. And essentially what these are, these are your little lock nuts. So as you snug this down, your adjuster's not gonna move. If you wanna make an adjustment, you loosen that, and then um, you can thread this in and out and then tighten down uh, the adjuster. I kind of find that it helps to just hold the adjuster and thread the grub screw in or out because that O-ring is gonna be kind of fighting you a little bit too. So if you just kind of hold the adjuster, get it to where you want, and then snug it back up, that seems to work really well. So that's the process for, I'm gonna do the other two uh, off camera. Okay, so those are all done. <clears throat> and I just snugged them up. I got them about like halfway out for now, just to kind of leave the valve somewhat open as I bleed the air out. So the next step it shows is to assemble uh, everything in this main, um, reservoir body here, but this is where I think I'm going to differ a little bit from the instructions because this is the next step, but I think um, I'm actually going to jump ahead and put uh, the um, piston and the whole seal assembly in first because I think it's going to help bleed this if I, if I fill this body with oil about halfway, which will then fill this about halfway, or, or maybe I'll fill this, what I might do is fill this all the way up, take this... Uh, floating piston and then put it in the oil and as I push it down that's going to make sure that there's no air in here because I think what I was having an issue with on the first one was when I went to bleed this it was difficult to get this tube to fill uh, with oil because you know you have to kind of turn it around and upside down to get the air bubbles because the shock sits like this the air um, the air is going to be trapped up in this area. So I know from building um, dirt bikes with uh, piggyback reservoirs that this is how you fill it. You would have, this would be your piggyback. You fill this up and then you put the piston in. And as you compress the piston, uh, it forces the oil and the air and any bubbles up through this chamber. So I'm going to do it that way. I think it's going to be a million times better. It really doesn't specify anything about the bleeding process in the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to jump ahead and um, do this step uh, next. Okay, so I just took a tiny bit of the seal grease and put it on the shaft. And then I'm going to uh, drop the shaft down into the main body here. Right, so there's that. So now you're gonna take your, your main seal, which is number five. And it's just this little black shock seal. And there is a groove. If you look on one side here, you'll see like a little groove in it and the other side does not have the groove. It's very important that the groove faces the shock body itself. So the groove goes onto the, uh, the shaft first. And just be careful with this, guys. I, I, this is why I greased everything, just so it slides on. The threads can be kind of sharp here. The edge of this can be kind of sharp and it is a very tight fit. So you need to slide that up and just slide it um, kind of as far in as you can. And then the next step is gonna to be to take the one of these number four O-rings and um, one of these, I'll get a little bit of grease on here and slide one of these O-rings on. So that's that. We have this little plastic spacer, which is number three, and that goes in the uh, the shock body end cap here. And then you have another number four O-ring. So it actually has a shock seal, that black uh, seal with the groove in it, and then it uses two O-rings. So this O-ring just presses in the end there, and then you have the other one already on there. 
and you take this. Uh, I am getting ahead of myself a little bit. I got to double check, I think. Let me double check one thing. I think there is actually a seal that's supposed to go on here. Hold on. So looking at this, there is a tiny O-ring uh, on here already. I just couldn't remember if I installed it already for some reason, but I didn't. So that comes pre-installed. So um, again, I put a little grease on the threads and around that other O-ring, and then this just slides carefully onto the shaft, and then this will um, thread into the main body. You're gonna have to kind of press that seal into this. And this isn't knurled or anything. There is no flat spot on here. So you're just gonna have to um, tighten it by hand. It doesn't need to be super tight. Just kind of wipe any of the grease off and try to get a decent grip on it. And snug it up. So that is your, and it's gonna help if you put a little bit of a oil on the shaft here as you slide it in and out too. And it is a pretty tight fit. So uh, there's definitely a little bit of stiction on these seals until, you know, once you get the oil inside, it's, it's definitely a, a, a lot smoother. So that's it, we're getting there guys. This one's going a lot faster than the first one. As this one went longer than I thought again, so I'm gonna split it into two parts and tune in for part two of the uh, assembly.